change it either way. That's the wonderful thing about Ideal Gas Law and why. Because uh, Dalton's Law partial pressure is derived from Ideal Gas Law. So you can do it either way you're more comfortable with. Just like the combined is derived from the ideal. They're all the same. Which one so you can use it? Um, they're both going to be about the same amount of legwork. Because your partial pressure, then what you have to do, you have to use your mole fraction and split up this partial pressure. So you'd still have to do um, an ideal first and then go through the Daltons. Because you've got to get your total mold. You still have to, either way, you still have to use your ideal to get this total moles first. Dalton's is not going to be able to get you your total moles. So you got to do your ideal to get your total moles first. Then if you don't, if you're having a little trouble thinking of it like this, you can go through Dalton's and say what contribution or what percentage of gas is contributing this much pressure and this much pressure. So that would get you the mass for the methane. Then you're going to use your other moles here. This time of your um, CO2 should be about 44.01, 44.02, something like that uh, grams for the molar mass. Uh, of course, one mole. And then that calculation should get you your mass for your CO2. Okay. Any questions with that? Any questions with kind of how to set up and go through that? If you're more comfortable doing kind of this, this second part that I did over here to the left as a Dalton's Law problem, that's perfectly fine. You just go back, take your total pressure, your total pressure is up there, 5525 five, 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 torr, or you can use this 7.270 atmospheres and solve for it using that way. Um, or you can kind of work through it like this. Either one, you the same answer. Number eight. Blaze, you did say number eight, right? Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. So for number eight, we're told uh, a container holds 100 grams of methane at 1,000 torr. And the gas is released until the pressure becomes 760 torr, and we want to find the mass in grams, in grams that the methane was removed. So immediately when you see this mass, we're thinking moles. We're seeing this, we're thinking pressure. Uh, we're thinking an until pressure here, so we're thinking P2. And we're thinking a second mass here, so I'm thinking N2. Everyone seeing that? Okay, so immediately we see multiples of each one, we're thinking combined, uh, combined gas law. And we want to eliminate out the ones that we, in this problem for your combined gas laws, you want to think of them as if they didn't change. Okay? For whatever reason, we were able to control the system where volume didn't change. And we were able to control the system where the temperature didn't change. Okay, so the only thing that you want to plug in is values that you have for pressure in moles. So the pressure you don't have to convert, it can go straight in. But they gave us this in mass, not moles. So we do have to convert that. So we're told we have 100 grams. Of our methane here. <clears throat> so that's going to get our moles of methane. Will somebody give me what this first um, mass of moles is? Thank you. 
Yes. So that's going to be your original moles of your methane gas. Now our pressure decreased right, and we're solving for our N2. So you're going to cross multiply for this. So what you'll really have is 760 torr times 6.234 divided by a thousand. Bless you. Somebody get for the end too. Four point seven three. What was after that three? A four. A four. A four. Okay. But then after that was an eight. So. Right. So we want to stick to three sig figs because of that um, that second pressure there. We're only certain of that pressure to that decimal place. So we're going to stick to three sig figs because of that. So 4.73 moles is what we ended up with. So if we want to know how much was removed, because that was really the key in doing all this, we want to know how much we lost. <clears throat> you ended up with 4.73 moles, you started with 6.23, so 6.234 moles minus the 4.74, you know you had at the end of it, how many moles of methane did you lose? Somebody? 1.50. 1.50? Yep. So you have 1.50 moles at the end. We want to know how much mass that is. So we're going to do, will someone do the molar mass a little bit further out from it? Goes far out as exactly what your calculator says when you add and multiply together. times the mass of methane here and should be coming up two sig figs should be coming up with 24 I'm sorry three sig figs should be coming up with 24.0 grams of methane that was lost everybody getting that or something really close to that okay. what else other questions okay that's your time there. About 14 minutes. Um, this is in the lab stuff. Sure. So I don't know. That's fine. This is a this is a specific this is a good practice problem. I'm gonna project it up here. Is that okay? Do you have some scratch paper to write on? Is it okay yeah. if I use it? Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Let me project this up. This is a good this is a good practice problem. Because y'all have I bet forgotten about specific heat. We are gonna have specific heat on the final. It doesn't hurt to go back and kind of think about this since it's coming back up. Week and a half. Week and a half. So, 
We're asked to, in the problem, so this is a lab problem, we're asked to calculate the amount of heat um, released to condense 277.6 grams of steam at this temp uh, to ice at negative 0.84 degrees C. So this is a specific heat problem. This is actually a competing specific heat problem where your mass Your mass, your specific heat, and your change in temperature is actually a competing. What page is this on the left hand? 128. It's in that big uh, review package you did last week. Oh. Thing I'd be really careful on on this is this whole second half. Now, this is the physics way of doing it. This is how I'd recommend you do it, since two of the professors that are putting questions on the final have majors in physical chemistry. So they're going to look at it like this, and they're going to set their problem up like this. So that's the way I'd recommend it, to work this problem. Um, in which the specific heat of this side is what? Is it going to be your steam or your ice? Kind of think of how your temperature is changing. You start out at what? Start out with a high temperature and it's a really low temperature. So this is going to be the specific heat of the high for your what? Your steam. So this is going to be the specific heat of the steam. And this is going to be the specific heat of water, but for what? Well, you're going to have two. So we're going to have two steps on this one. So you're going to, the first one will be the liquid. And then the second one, uh, another one just like this, will be from liquid to gas. What does that one have negative? Mm -hmm. um, it's just the inverse of all that, because otherwise your negatives won't cancel. So the heat is being lost. So if something's really energetically um, favorable, but it's losing heat, it's looked at as if the system loses the heat. Anytime you have an exothermic reaction, delta H is negative. It's putting out heat. It's like an engine. An engine heat loss is negative. The engine doesn't get to, does not get to keep that heat and has to give it away. <clears throat> you have class in 10 minutes. Um, so we're going to start plugging in numbers on this one. So what is the mass of steam we start with? Mm -hmm. And the specific heat for your um, gaseous steam. C. What is your um, change in temperature? So what's your T final? Right. This is your T final here. This is what everything ends up as, and this is what everything was starting at. So T final minus T initial, be very careful with your um, negatives here. I'm not writing that above that. Let's move this down. careful with your negative on this temperature. It's important that that went so cold it went negative. I smoothed this down. I don't know why I wrote it up there, but I did. Um, so then you're going to fill in the second part of all this information that's going to be the negative of all of that. So what's your mass going to be at the end? Thank you. What's going to be your mass at the end? Trick question. Vaporization. Oh no, your 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 mass. What's your mass going to be at the end? Same. It's the same. Yeah. Just because I cooled it down, did I lose water? Did somehow it just whew, no? It didn't disappear. It didn't go anywhere. So you have the same mass.
our specific heat for our liquid. So we had to go through, we've got two phases to go through, right? We're gonna cool it down, we're gonna go through the liquid, and we're gonna go to the solid. But what's the one we really care about? The solid, right? Because we're condensing that steam to ice. We didn't say we condensed it to liquid, we went all the way down to ice. So we care about the solid one here. So negative, I'm sorry, two point two nine two joules per gram degree C. Temperature is the same. T final minus T initial, right? Same stuff. going to be? Positive or negative? Say that again. So your heat. The, the, the question is, is the whole point we're doing this is to ask the heat. Where's the heat going? The heat's being released, right? This very energetic steam going all the way down to ice. That heat's got to go somewhere and it's wanting to know the amount of heat released. So how much heat released? This is your this is your equation right here for your, your release of fusion. So that's going to be your bottom step. And your heat of vaporization is going to be going up. So these are as you go up. Does that make sense? If you all haven't seen these terms before, so I'm going to give you a little bit on that. Heat of vaporization is the heat it takes to take it from liquid to gas. So if you're going from liquid to gas, it's energy input to heat it up. But if you're going backwards in reverse, it's going to be releasing exactly that same amount of heat. So would it be positive? or negative? Negative. Because it's got to release that heat. So if it took that same amount of heat to put it in and boil the liquid, when you take that gas back down to a liquid, it's got to shoot that same exact number of heat back out to get back down. Is everyone seeing that? Okay. So this would be a negative. What else is going to be a negative? So your fusion is what it takes to go from liquid to solid. To fuse two water molecules together, it's going to be negative as well. So your total negative heat release is going to be these two added up. Everyone seeing that? No. Okay. Okay. So to fuse something together, if it fuses a solid and you want to undo that fusion, you have to heat it up. You got to give it energy to break the bonds between the water molecules to make it go to a liquid. Before it's negative, that's how much heat it takes. It takes 334 joules for every gram of water you have. Well, we're at the opposite end. We've got a bunch of steam that we're wanting to bring down to ice. We're wanting to know how much heat it's going to release in each step. So for this first step, when it's coming from a gas to a liquid, it's going to re release 2,260 joules of energy per every gram of water there. Because it's ice chain? Because it's very energetic going to less energetic. So it's got to release heat. It's got to, it's got to release heat to cool down. Okay? So what does your refrigerator do? It cools. Cools. But by cooling it does what? What is the refrigerator always? It's always what? At the back of it. It's always really what? Right. It's always really hot. There's got to be some energy that's being released when you're cooling stuff down. Okay? So this is the energy that's released from that first step. And the second step, you release this much energy going from liquid to solid. Okay, so both of those are looked at as negatives. Negative delta H releases. Okay? So if this is joules per gram, okay, and you add these two up, that's going to give you your total heat release from gas to solid phase. So somebody do that for me. Okay, so that's your heat release uh, per gram of water. Now then, how much, how much, trick question, how much water did you have there? Because did the mass ever change? So how much water did you, water, did you always have there? Mm-hmm. 
Does it need to be multiplied or divided to cancel and get our heat? Where's mass at in this heat release? So we need to multiply. So you're going to take this number right here, be careful about that negative, and you're going to multiply it by 277.6 grams water. That's going to get you your total, um, your total delta H release of heat, and it will be negative. And we may even want to convert that to kilojoules because it's going to be a really large number. Some may do 2594 times 277.6. Uh, So we can keep four C four C Oh, just that? No. Seven hundred twenty thousand ninety four point four. Zero with the nine Nine oh four? Oh nine eight four. Yes, they did a good job confusing me there. Okay, so that is a, a ginormous amount of joules. Okay, so first, before we get this in the right number of sig figs, we're going to do a little bit of conversion here. So another way to simplify this is to put it in kilojoules. So you're going to take this answer here and divide it by 1,000. That's going to get us in kilojoules. When you're talking about that much energy, you need it in kilojoules. Okay, so we're just going to move that three decimal places. So you really have 720.1, be careful with your sign here, it's going to be negative, release the heat. That's a good, that's a good problem for a lab final. Mm -hmm. Any questions? The key here was knowing that you're going in reverse. So if it's positive to combine the two, right? If it's positive to get them to release, it's going to be releasing that much. It's going to be negative going backwards. Okay. What else? Maybe one more question. You know, Doctor Burns. No. no. So is that all you had to do for the program? Mm-hmm. I thought I didn't think they had given you the heat of fusion and heat of vaporization, in which yeah, case you, you, even have to you, you didn't have to. Nope. If they hadn't, though, they could have made you solve for one or the other. I thought that's what it was at first, and then I saw it off to the side. I told everyone um, that was here earlier for the SI, I'm going to have a study session for you all since you have a test coming back the Monday after Thanksgiving. So you have a test the 30th. Right. Yeah. Okay. You have a test the 30th coming back from Thanksgiving. 
So we're going to have a study session that weekend. Okay. I'm going to put the link on there. I couldn't get the doodle poll link to work because when I tried to survey myself, just typing my name, it went, it didn't even show it in the results. So um, for whatever reason, it didn't work. So I'm going to try recreating the link. If it still doesn't work, I'm going to do like an internal like Google Forms link or something like that. But it will be up there by the end of class. Okay, so you all go on there. Put. Um, I'm going to make Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday times available. And it's whatever is the most popular will be here. Uh, I doubt many people want to come for Thursday, but I'll put it up there anyways, because I had some requests for that. So, um, I can put Wednesday up there too if you would like me to, since y'all don't have class that day. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. I'm available whenever. Can you do Tuesday? Uh, can't get a space for Tuesday. So, but any other day. Yep. But we'll have a three hour study session block. and. Most of it will be for test five, and the rest of it will be a little bit of final review. So just keep keep your eyes on the course content for that. It'll be up by the end of class.